Okay, hi there. So in this video, we are going to set up MongoDB with our little CRUD function that we wrote with Vercel serverless functions. And this is going to be a very simple way to set up with MongoDB, not production ready. I'm not a MongoDB expert, but this will get you up and running uh, and you can start learning with it. Okay, so last time we made this little guy right here. And if you haven't seen that video, there should be a link in the description. In this video, what we're going to do is set up MongoDB with this API. So we're not gonna do any Svelte code or anything, just um, that'll come next video. Okay, so we got to set up our database in the MongoDB website, and then we have to basically get the URI so we can connect to our um, database and put that as an environment variable in Vercel, and then we will set up the API. Okay, so let's see how quick we can do this. So first you wanna sign in or sign up. Once you do that, you're gonna be here. You wanna create a new cluster. So I already have one, but you should see this page, and I don't really know what this is doing very well. So I just go down create cluster with the default. So um, that will start your cluster. It's gonna take a few minutes. So while we're waiting, we're going to go to database access and we're going to create a user who has access to our uh, clusters. So add new database. Okay, so I'm just gonna do something very simple. Like I said, this is not production ready, but I'm just gonna make the name Svelte and also the password is Svelte to keep it simple. Okay, read and write to any database. So they have full range, do whatever they want, and add user. Okay, so now we have a user and then we need network access. So which IP addresses can access our database? And again, just setting this up so we can practice. It's going to be allow access from anywhere and then confirm. Cool, so we have that set up. I'm gonna come back to clusters and it still might not be ready, but once it is, you're going to connect and then connect your application. And we're going to take this right here and put this as an environment variable in Vercel. Okay, so come to your dashboard and then go to your site. We're just doing practice as our site. Uh, and then go to settings Then come to environment variables. Okay, so what you're going to do is plain text. And what do we want it to, uh, to call it? You could say DB URI maybe and then we'll paste that in here. So there's a few things we need to fill in ourselves. So right here, the password. So remember I did Svelte and Svelte as the password and then the database name. So since we haven't actually created a database yet, we can put anything we want here. So I'm just gonna call it Svelte as well. So our database name, how about Svelte uh, DB? There we go. Okay, and which environments should I put this in? I'm just gonna put them in all environments. Cool, save. And somehow it will uh, it just automatically is going to work in our um, uh, our dev environment too. So here is new CRUD. This is where we're going to be working with everything. So uh, npm install mongoose, and then up here we're going to require it, and then we're going to get that. After you've done that, we're going to get that environment variable. So it's going to be process dot env dot um, what did we call it? DB URI. Okay, DB. URI. Cool. So now we have that URI there. And with that, we can connect to our database. Okay. And it's going to be this right here. So mongoose.connect URI. And then we got some config right here, which to be honest, I'm not completely sure what it does, but um, this is what I saw. And then an error function in case the connection fails. Okay. So that is going to connect us. And then finally, we want to create a schema. So basically, what types of documents are we adding to this database? So we're just gonna have a simple one of name string. So last time all we did was name string, but I'm gonna add age in to make it a little more interesting. So now we have that. And then we just sort of initialize our schema as a model. Okay, and this variable right here, person, is what we're going to use to interact with the database. Okay, so we can't quite see if everything is working yet. We're just gonna have to write some of our functions and then, um, get it started and see if they work. So we're gonna Vercel dev. So this is all sort of the boilerplate that we have. Now, first thing is person.find. So basically we have four things, person.find, person uh, new person.save after creating a new person, person.find by ID and update, and then person.find by ID and delete. So we're gonna go through each of those. Okay, so person.find is just gonna find all the people in this um, collection, this database. I'm sort of, I'm not quite using those terms correctly, I think, but 
Um, okay, so person dot find, and then after you find them, it's going to pass you the people, and we're going to send that back to the uh, client. Okay, so let's try that. So basically, it should be empty. I'm going to come here to Insomnia. So get items, localhost, API slash CRUD, but this is new CRUD. I think, yeah, that's what I called it. Okay, so send. Let's see if this works. Okay, cool. So we're getting nothing, which is what we're expecting because we haven't uh, put anything in there yet. But let's see. I'm actually not sure if we come to our cluster and you click on collections. That's where we can see the data in our databases. So it might be nothing because we haven't added anything. Um, no, it's nothing yet. Okay, these are from before, so um, you should have nothing. Let us put something in the database, and then we'll see something. Okay, so remember the name of our database is SvelteDB. So that SvelteDB should pop up here. Okay, so for post, what you do is basically you take um, from the client. So you could probably check. You probably want to check that the client passes the right things. But basically, client has to pass in a name and an age object. And then we take that, we pass it into new person, and then we call on this new person dot save. And once we've done that, we'll get the new person and return them back to the client. So let's try that here. Come to Insomnia, create item. Okay, so Sandy 16. Oops, shouldn't be CRUD. It should be new CRUD. Send that. Cancel request. Cancel. Nope. No, okay, that's wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay, cool. So we have just added Sandy. And if we come to get items here and we try that again, um, Cool, so we have Sandy. I guess I added Sandy twice somehow uh, by clicking it twice or something. But we come here to our UI, and here we go. So it added SvelteDB, our people. And we have um, under people, oops, that was practice.people. We have Sandy and then Sandy again. OK, cool. So notice uh, SvelteDB and then people. People comes from this up here. So. The name of this model is person. I use the person schema. And then the plural is people, which is what our collection is called. So I'm pretty sure this is the database. And then this is the uh, collection. OK, so if we come down here a bit, now we want to update these people. So I accidentally added two Sandys. So now let's try um, to update one of them to Bob. OK, so we're going to get a person and an ID. So the ID of the object we want to update. So if we come to Insomnia, we'll see we have this underscore ID. So let's update this one to Bob. OK, so update item. Going to give it this. And also needs an age. I don't really know how old they are. 15. OK, so what's it? What the, oh, OK, I'll run it. And then, oh, crap, I keep doing that one. OK, so what it's going to do is take person and ID off of the body, so ID here and person. And then it's going to pass that into person.findById and update. Um, and then we do return original false because we want it to return the updated person after they've been updated. If you don't have this, then it'll turn the person before they were updated, uh, which is what we're doing here. OK, so here we go. And now we have SpongeBob, age 15, instead of Sandy, age 16. So if I refresh this, so Sandy, Sandy, SpongeBob, age 15. Cool. So that update worked. And then finally, we have our delete down here. So this, you just need to supply an ID. And find it'll person.findById and delete that ID. And then it'll pass back the deleted person. OK, so notice all of them start with person.something, except for the create. So first, you have to create the person and then do new person.save. OK, so find by ID and delete. Let's delete. Sandy. So we'll take this ID here. And I won't forget this time. New CRUD. OK, so we pass in this ID and send that. OK, cool. So we should only have one uh, Bob right now. Basically, it should just say SpongeBob. Yep, so it's just one SpongeBob there. Cool, so that is pretty much it. Um, so you can play with around with this. So I have a very basic error handling, but um, you will want to look up a better way to do error handling. Basically, you want to check to make sure the client passes the right stuff into your API, return like a 400 error. Um, I was going off of this article, like I mentioned before. They do a bit more error handling. You could check that as well. 
but it's always nice to have good air handling. Okay, that is the end of this video. Let me know what you think. And in the next video, I will add some Svelte code on top of this API. Okay, have a good day.